Murray Gans here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about clay to begin with, then we'll show you how to go ahead and get started with a, a very simple project. There's lots and lots of different types of clay um, you know, that are generally sold in these boxes. This box weighs 50 pounds. The interesting thing about clay is the fact that the more of it you buy, the cheaper it is. Uh, hey Chris, my doggy Chris. The uh, thing about it is though, you, you wanna, if you want to buy a, uh, a ton of clay, you can, but you got to make sure you have some place to store it. Okay, move out of the way so I can see this. Okay, so we're going to show you what's in here. This is my other dog, Mimi. Good, you're good. Okay, inside this, the clay comes in these, these nice little plastic bag, plastic bags. And so this is this is 25 pounds of clay. The uh, When you talk about clays, you'll talk about firing temperatures, and those are also, uh, it's referred to in, in, in terms of cones. And uh, a cone is actually this little guy right here. This is a... It's called a pyrometric cone, and this is a, actually made out of clay, and it's formulated to melt at a specific, with a specific amount of heat spent on it. Now, it doesn't actually measure temperature. What this measures is it measures uh, heat work. So that's a, that's a uh, quantity of, of not only how hot your kiln gets, but also how long you've been firing. So those two things together will cause this cone to, to melt. You notice this cone is actually set at a little bit of an angle here, and so what happens is, um, as it reaches its maturing temperature, the clay starts to melt, and when it does, that cone will, will bend over. Um, this is called a witness cone because it's inside the kiln, uh, and it witnesses your firing. And these are actually the same, the same type of cone. This is a cone that hasn't been fired yet, and this is one that came out of a, my most recent 05 firing. One more thing about clay. Um, if you pick a clay that you like, either a brown clay or a white clay, whatever, there's clays that have a lot of grit in them. It's called grog. Uh, they're clays that are very smooth, more like a porcelain. porcelain. Uh, but, but find one clay that you like and stick with that. I wouldn't spend tons of money and time uh, switching clay bodies around. Uh, it's what you do with the clay that really matters. Uh, find a clay that, that feels good in your hands that, that you think you'll have success working with. Obviously an instructor of some sort of a, a local community college can, can, can help you pick out which clay to start with. Uh, almost all these places have their, their favorite clays for you to start with. Um, and then just stay with that one. You want to become master of just one or maybe two clays or clay bodies, and you want to become master of just a very small number of glazes. Um, don't just keep switching and switching and switching, uh, uh, because that, that gets expensive and you won't be very successful. You want to really, really learn the glazes that you're using. So, so take the time to get to know your clay and get to know your glazes. Okay, so now I've told you to stay with one clay. <laughs> Invariably, you won't. So you're going to do like I do, and that is you're going to try a couple of types of clay. So what I do when I first get a bag of clay is I take a second and I, I label what it is in case I come across it later on and want to know, oh my gosh, what is that? Because a clay that, if you don't know what the clay is, you won't know its firing temperature, and you, you won't know uh, if it's going to work because you don't want to underfire your clay or uh, overfire your clay. So I'm, I go ahead and just take a Sharpie and on two sides, label the clay very clearly. All right, so we got our clay out. We got it labeled, we're ready to go. Let's open the bag up. Save your twist tie. Here we have it. Our bag of clay, ready to go. What I love to do at this point, and you might want to do the same thing, is just give that. Oh, it smells good. It smells like earth. Okay, so now what we're gonna do now is we're going to, we're gonna wedge some clay up so we can use it. I'm going to use my cutoff wire here. I'm going to pull through the clay like that. You notice I'm going, to, I'm going to wipe this off. I read this in a book uh, on tile making. Stick that back in because if you leave that on there and it, and it uh, dries out, it'll make a lot of dust and you don't want the dust. I'm going to cut it down like this, down like that. Again, I'm going to clean my cutoff wire. Stick it right back in. That clay can be used. I'm going to have four nice pieces of clay here that are ready to go. All right, at this point, take the time, go ahead and close your bag back up. You're ready to go. What we're going to do first is we're going to wedge this clay. Um, and wedging clay is what's going to mix it, and uh, so it's, 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 it's even consistency all the way throughout. You're going to want to do this whether you're going to slab build, whether you're going to coil build, or whether you're going to throw. You definitely want to wedge your clay. Um, a word about surface though. 
you need to wedge on a porous surface. Now, in a lot of a lot of studios, play studios, you'll see a plaster covered table that's got canvas on top of it, and that's great if you've got the facility to do that. Now, I started off with a piece of plywood that had canvas on it. Um, the canvas kind of was kind of a problem, so I just took the canvas off, and now I just use a plain piece of plywood, and this 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 works extremely well. And you can.